My name is Joe Heinemann. I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Guatemala from 1969 to 72, and then I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Mali from 1972 to 74. In both countries I worked in agriculture, introducing uh, corn, wheat, and potatoes in the case of Guatemala, and in working with vegetable production in uh, Africa. And uh, Peace Corps inspired me uh, and I, to go on to uh, work as a Peace Corps staff. I was an Associate Peace Corps Director in uh, Central African Republic and in Mauritania. And later I was a Country Director in Chad and Panama. And I've uh, spent about 18 of my uh, uh, career years in, associated with Peace Corps one way or the other. My name is Greg Polk and I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Mali, West Africa from 1973 until early 1975. Uh, I was first assigned to the village of Fari in the southwest corner of Mali on the Guinea border. Um, I was there for eight months and then I was assigned to uh, the regional capital of Kai, the city of Kai, in the region of Kai of Mali where I spent the, most of the remainder of my time. At the very end I was assigned to a wells project uh, that was based in Bamako for the last three or four months of my, my time. One of the people that I worked with during the entire time when I was in Kai, uh, a young uh, engineer uh, assigned to the Public Works Department, well I was assigned also to the Public Works Department, um, was in, he, he is, his, his original town or his, his family town was just north of Bamako. Um, and so I saw him, not only did I work with him at Kai, but when in those last few months where I was transferred to Bamako, uh, I, he came to Bamako or came to Kai, uh, Kati, which was just north of Bamako. Um, and uh, he, we saw each other and continued our, our friendship. And the friendship was based upon the T group, which is a, a traditional, mostly male, but also female, um, activity of the afternoon. People get together for tea, to have this sweet tea, and there's usually three pots of tea uh, that are boiled, you know, boiled uh, um, and then poured with great ceremony. Sort of a fundamental aspect of, of Malian culture and society, actually all of West Africa. Um, and so, Malik was his name, the, the friend that I'm referring to. He was part of the tea group that I was a part of in Kai um, during that time that I worked on the school project. Um, and uh, when I was medevaced from Mali, uh, it was one of those circumstances where I didn't have time to say goodbye to people who were close to me. And Malik was one of those people. Um, and when I returned to Mali in 2005, and I had not been back to Mali since 1975, when I returned to, to Mali in 2010, excuse me, um, I had not been back to Mali in those 35 years. Uh, and when I returned, um, I set about trying to find Malik. But, you know, we're talking 35 years. Uh, many of the people I knew from that time had already died. Um, I already found through the grapevine uh, many of the, some of the personnel at Peace Corps had died in that time. So I had no idea where Malik was or even whether he was still alive. I was at a uh, workshop in Segu, Mali, uh, about six, eight months into the year, uh, into 2011, and came across an engineer, an old engineer, uh, that worked for the region of Segu and he, you know, he struck me as a guy who would probably be connected. So I started to ask him, uh, did you know anybody who worked 
in the region in, in Kai in those years 73 75 and it was at a table it was so it was a lunch so he had uh, many of the people he worked with around him and he, they all started comparing notes about who they knew at that time and no oh, he was too young no no he was in Segu he was in Mopti started going through the inventory of all the people they knew um, and slowly through that process came up with the name of the director of that uh, uh, of the uh, rural public works uh, department in Kai in those years who I knew well uh, and then somebody tracked down his, fa his phone number so uh, to make a long story short uh, I called Mustafa Mustafa then took it upon himself to to create a reunion of many of the people that I were not only Malik but, uh, but all of the people that I worked with, many of whom have now moved to Bamako. Um, so I was in Bamako at this point, and so Mustafa created this reunion of five of my colleagues from those years, and I have photographs of us all looking like, you know, 23, 24-year-old young, young people. Um, and uh, one of them was Malik, so that's how I reconnected with Malik. Um, and Malik, tell, as Malik tells this story, he always wondered what happened to me. I mean, we were very close, as one gets close to people and those at that age. Uh, and, uh, you know, he was married and he had, uh, that we always had this discussion about whether he was going to have a second wife. This kind of multiple wife phenomenon was always an interesting thing to me and it's often interesting to, to Westerners. How does that work? So I was always quizzing him about you know, whether he was going to have a second wife and whatever. And he assured me he wasn't going to have a second wife. And of course, I discover 35 years later, not only did he have the second wife, he had the third wife. Uh, and uh, I chided him on his assurance to me uh, 35 years early, earlier that uh, he was only going to have one wife. Because that was kind of a, it was kind of a, and it still is, it's kind of a statement of your progressivism uh, to say you're only going to have one wife. Um, and it's increasingly controversial because people say they're going to have one wife and then they take a second wife. And in fact, uh, this is the subject of a book that uh, uh, was just published in Mali about a woman's sort of emotional turmoil uh, about uh, over her husband taking a second wife. So anyway, setting all that aside, uh, Malik did not continue in public service. He um, left not long after I left Mali and started a construction company, a trucking company, um, and now runs a, a butcher shop in the town of Kati, just north of Bamako. And I've seen him several times now and have caught up on all of his family and his kids and where he lives and how he lives. He's come down to Bamako to visit me. So it was a very kind of extraordinary reunion to be able to connect with somebody that I always felt bad about having not said goodbye to and that always sort of carried in himself uh, that feeling that, you know, what happened to this person? Um, so that's the story of Malik. Love it. <laughs> so my name is Jory Nilsson and I was Peace Corps Medical Officer in Mali from 1978 to 1980. Uh, we were located in Bamako, which is the capital. And the way I got to there was that I was a new, newly graduated nurse practitioner and I, my husband, a doctor, was going to Mali to be uh, head of a project training village level health workers employing um, or using Peace Corps volunteers. So I thought, oh, it'd be really nice to, to work as a nurse practitioner and Mali happened to have an opening for Peace Corps medical officer. So I applied. I never heard back from Peace Corps Washington. I thought, oh well. So we got to Mali and we were there for no more than a week when I was walking down the road uh, to the hotel where we were staying and this car pulls up and it's got the Peace Corps director and the temporary Peace Corps medical officer. They jump out of the car and they say, Jory, will you please come and work for us? And I said, well, I wanted to. I applied to Peace Corps Washington, but I never heard. And they said, we don't care 
We, we don't care. We want you. We need you. So that's how I became Peace Corps Medical Officer. No, Ali Touré Farka. Hamad Nbokum Afel. Hamad Sankare Yumar Touré. Tous musiciens titulaires du groupe Asko de Nyafenke.